Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating this pattern that has sort of wavy lines as well as a little flower in it. We're going to start with a new document. It doesn't matter how big yours is. Mine's 1920 by 1080. I'm just clicking create. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I want a rectangle that doesn't have a fill, but it does want to have a stroke. And I want the stroke to be fairly intense. I'm thinking about 11 or 10 pixels. I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag out a square. I'm going to the direct selection tool here. I'm clicking away from the shape and then selecting over this anchor point. Hold the shift key to select this anchor point. So we've just got these two selected. I'm going to drag on this little widget just to round the corners here. I'm going to expand the appearance of this to bake that effect in with object expand appearance. So you'll see that this is now a filled edge shape. It's no longer a stroke. I'm going to drag a duplicate of this away, holding the Alt key to drag a duplicate. If I hold the Shift key, I'm going to move it perfectly vertically. So I want this to all line up. I'm going to select over both these shapes, hold the Alt key to start moving, and then add the Shift key so that I'm moving in a perfectly horizontal direction. I want everything again to line up here. Now I'm going to select over everything, and I'm going to the Shape Builder tool. It shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. On the Shape Builder tool, I'm going to hold down the Alt key to get rid of the shapes I don't want. So Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac. I'm just going to drag through this, and I'm going to drag through this. Everything else I do want. So for that, I'm just going to drag through these lines to join them all together. So there are lots of separate lines here. If I just drag over everything, I'll drag it all so that it creates a single shape. So now that I've got a single shape here, I'm just going to click away. I'm going to rotate this around, hold the shift key as I rotate it in a vertical direction. So I just wanted to rotate it 45 degrees. Selecting back over this, I'm going to flip again the stroke and the fill because this gives me another chance of determining the stroke weight that I'm going to use for my final project. don't want my stroke weight to be very heavy, so I think I'm going to bring this down to about 8 points for this. I'm going to select away from this shape. That's really important. I'm going to select a color to work with here just temporarily. I'm going to make a rectangle over the top part of this shape just after it starts curving around. I'll go to the selection tool, hold the Alt key, and drag another shape down to exactly the same position at the bottom. What I'm going to do is use these to cut things away. So what I want to be left with is this sort of hourglass shape. Select over everything back to our Shape Builder tool. Hold the Alt or Option key and just drag through the top and the bottom. That leaves this shape behind. Now I don't want this top or this bottom line, so what I'm going to do is go to the Direct Selection tool. And if I select just over this line, it's not really obvious what's going to happen, but if I press Delete, you can see I'm deleting just that line. Click away from the shape, select this bottom line, press Delete. If it make a mistake, just undo it and go and start again selecting it because it can be a little bit off-putting because it seems like everything's selected but only that line is selected. So with my shape now selected, I'm going back to the stroke panel. I want to use this stroke where I've got a projecting cap so the cap is sticking out a little bit more. It's just going to work a bit better. Click away from the shape. Now we're going to create the background shape. So I'm going to flip my colors and use or select a background color. So I think today I'm going to choose a pink color. Go to the rectangle tool. Just looking at this lining up, I want to line up sort of halfway through this line. So looking at this as being a good point, just going to drag over. And something that looks pretty much like this is going to make a good background. We've got a little bit of the black sticking out at the top and the bottom and a little bit of this curve, but we've not got the inside of the curve. So everything's looking pretty good here. I'm going to choose Object Arrange Center Back because it just might be a bit easier for you to see what's going on. Select over everything and we're back to the Shape Builder tool. Again, Alt or Option, we're just going to carve off these corners. So just drag through that little corner area. And down here, you might have to zoom in to get in close because you don't want to take the line away. You just want to take the pink. And I'll drag through this and this. So this is what we're left with, our glass sort of shape. Select over it and we're ready to make our pattern with Object Pattern Make. Click OK. 
In the Pattern Options dialog, we're going to set it to Brick by Column. Make sure this icon looks like this, so it's got a slash line through it. That means that you can independently change the height and the width. And we're going to start decreasing the height. I'm using Shift and the down arrow to make big moves, and then just the down arrow to make little moves. What I'm looking for is up here, I want these shapes to join. You can see now they're not joined, and now they're joined. You can zoom in to see if you've got it right. I think mine is pretty near. It might be a pixel off. Nope, I think that's perfect. Let's zoom back out again. And I'm going to decrease the width. I want to bring the width all the way in. So this is the basic pattern. I'm going to click Done. Over here in the Swatches dialog, you'll see my pattern. So I'm selecting it. I'm clicking the plus symbol and click OK, because that makes a duplicate of the pattern. And to this, we can add our flower. So we'll have two patterns, one without the flower and one with. I'll double click on this to open up the shape and the pattern options dialog. With nothing selected here, making sure I don't have anything selected, I'm going to click here on the gradient and then click back on the fill. It's really hard to get rid of a pattern from the fill area, so just clicking on color doesn't work, but clicking on gradient and then back on color does. So I'm going to choose a color that is a reasonable sort of match for this design. I'll go for a sort of purple. I'm going to the Rectangle tool, select it. I've got my tile showing here. That's the Show Tile option. So it's helping me in the area I want to draw. I'm holding down the Shift key. I'm just going to drag out a rectangle. Now, I can't see it, but I'm not panicking. If you can't see it, just flip this to this icon. There's two icons here. There's top in front and bottom in front. And if you can't see your shape, even though you've drawn it over the edge of this pattern tile, that'll be your problem. Now, I don't want a stroke, so I'm going to turn the stroke off. Let's focus on just the fill having that selected. Let's go back to our selection tool. Make sure we have our little rectangle, our little square selected. I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform and Pucker and Bloat. I'm going to increase the bloat on this because that gives me this rather cute little flower. I'll click OK. We're going to expand that with Object Expand Appearance. That just bakes the flower shape in. i make sure my flower is pretty much central inside the loops here. And let's go and find a gradient to use here. So we're going up to the Swatches panel. Click here on the Library and go down to Gradients. And I'm using Fruits and Vegetables. In fruits and vegetables, I'm going to choose a gradient such as radish. That's just a nice little gradient here. I'm going to the gradient box here. You can get to it by choosing window gradient. And I'm just going to set it to a radial gradient. Now you can have this with the darkest in the middle, or if you click here, you're going to reverse it. So you've got a couple of gradients there. Any one of these sort of fairly simple gradients is going to work. Just make sure you choose radial and then just experiment in whether it looks better reversed or not. Now I'm going to settle for this sort of red one with the dark red in the center. Not worried that it's not really going particularly well with the background color right now. Doesn't worry me at all. Let's click done. I'm going to select over this shape, just move it out of the way. It's not helping at the moment. Let's create a rectangle. I'm going to turn off the stroke so we can focus on the fill. This is our pattern. Now, as I said, I wasn't really happy with the pink, but with this shape selected with the pattern inside it, I can go up here to recolor artwork. I'm going down to advanced options. Now here in the assign area, I'm going to roll down here and you can see that because I use black, it's not editable. So I'm going to click here to add a new color to the current color harmony. I'm going to make sure there's an arrow here. That means that the black will be editable. Let's go to edit. I'm going to click here on unlink harmony colors because I want to be able to find this pink and I want to be able to move it. Well, you can see here I can move it. So I can choose a better area for the pink to be. I might want it to be a bit more orange, a bit more peachy. I can click here to link the harmony colors, and now I can drag these around so I can go around the color wheel. These colors are all traveling together with the same sort of spatial arrangement. At any time, I can come in here and say, well, I didn't really like this particular color or this one, and it's individually adjust them. 
Now, as for the black, you've got a couple of blacks here. You just need to work out which one you want. And it's typically the second one that you drag away. I'm just going to decrease the brightness on this, and that is the black that is represented in the image. This black is not, so I'm just going to right-click and remove it because that just removes any confusion. Now, you could choose different colors here. You can change the saturation and the brightness of individual colors down here should you wish to do so. When you've got a design that you like, just click OK. Over here in the swatches panel, you'll see that you've still got the design that came out of the pattern options dialog. You'll never lose that if you recolor this way, but you've also got a second pattern which has these different colors in it. And of course, we've still got the original pattern, which was this more simple one. Object Transform Scale is going to allow me to scale it. I'm going to disable Transform Objects and just set a uniform value for my pattern. So this is the original pattern. This is the one with flowers in it that we created out of the Pattern Options dialog. Click on this again, and this is our newly colored version. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.